So what did I do this month? Well, quite a lot. Okay, maybe it doesn't look like that much, but trust me when I say it was a hell of a month. So where to begin? Begin, 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 begin. It all started with my testers informing me that my game was a buggy mess. Mainly the foliage spawning system. So how it worked previously was every 5 days it would detect the trees around you in a 500 meter radius and spawn collectible grass, raspberry seeds and so on. But I seemed to forget a rather large problem. If players wanted to explore past 500 meters from their beds they wouldn't find anything to collect except for trees which obviously isn't great in an open world game. So I decided it was rework time. I completely overhauled the system to firstly spawn vegetation as the world was being generated for the first time all across the world. Each vegetation item has a few requirements such as biomes as well as a chance to spawn value. How they spawn is similar to before. The system goes through each tree in the world, checks for a random chance and decides what to spawn. This is where the key difference is though. For the sake of exploration consistency, after the initial world gen, the spawn of vegetation becomes less random, shall we say. By this I mean that there will never be more vegetation in the world than there was initially on the first day. This sounds like a problem, but as far as I can tell, it won't be because I've made sure that it's all pretty densely populated. When a player interacts with a bit of vegetation, it'll do a little sphere cast around its position, find a new tree, and then have that position be added to a list of vegetation positions to spawn when the time comes. And with that, we have a much better, optimized, and consistent vegetation system. While I was doing this, I also received a bit of feedback about how the mine's entrance worked, and was told it felt a bit too video gamey, so I completely reworked that too. But before I got to that, I actually decided to implement a little feature I'd been meaning to do for a little while now. The leveling system. It's pretty basic, you have four skills that you can level up, farming and foraging, combat, fishing and mining. For this version I decided to focus on the first two. Whenever you level up a skill, you always unlock something. At levels 5 and 10 of each skill, you'll get the option to pick one of two skills. Okay, so back to the mines. So for those of you who don't know, how you used to enter the mines was via the summoning stone where you'd select the request, make your sacrifice, go to sleep, and then the gods would teleport you down to the mines just before you woke up. I decided that, from the feedback I received, to make the mines entrance something you'd actually have to find in the world. So since this game is set generally around the migration period, which is the 5th-ish century, around Britain, I thought it'd be a cool detail to have some old derelict Roman buildings. So I went through a few designs and eventually settled on one that I liked. Definitely wasn't because I was struggling to model the other ones. I wanted these towers to spawn randomly throughout the world, but also be pretty evenly distributed, so that there would always be one somewhat close to where the player was. I decided to use an algorithm called Poisson Sampling, something I really struggle to say without sounding like a Frenchman. Poisson Sampling basically splits the world into a grid and places one point randomly in each of those grid cells. Usually this is used on a pretty small scale to spawn things like trees and rocks in such a way that they don't overlap with each other. Now, I kind of butchered this usage, so I decided to rename the implementation Fish Sampling. Ooh, you suck. Okay, moving swiftly on. I also decided the goblins weren't annoying enough, which is something I thought I'd never say, but there you go. How the goblins used to work was that they would just chase you, swing five times, wait a bit and repeat, but I thought this was a bit boring, so now... They'll still chase you, but after they hit you a couple of times, they'll try and run away and hide from you until they can attack you again. Okay, so this next feature is a pretty small one, but you don't see it in many games, and I think you can add quite a lot. This feature is moon cycles. This was done pretty easily with some basic maths, similarly to how I explained how normals worked in my other video. Basically, you use the dot product between the moon's forward vector and the sun's forward vector to not only determine how to render the moon, but also to determine how much light the moon should emit. Okay, so we're in Unity and you can see we're about halfway through the month. There's a full moon just risen over the horizon and it's giving off quite a good amount of light. You can see there are shadows down here. So if I just quickly change the settings and move it to a bit later in the month, so to the 21st, you can see it's a completely different cycle and it's not giving off any shadows. It's much darker. And I think it adds a lot, so I can also play around with the time and show you how this all... You know, look at sunset, see the moon up there. Go back. Yeah, I think it looks pretty nice, to be honest. Another piece of feedback I received was on how the passing out system works. So the system was heavily inspired by Stardew Valley's passing out system, just without the stamina drain. So whenever a player stays up past 2am, they'd pass out and get transported back to their bed by the gods. As with the mines, I was told this felt too video gamey. 
So instead, I've changed it so when you pass out, you'll only get teleported back to your bed when you're in the mines. The idea there being that the gods are trying to protect you and the mines are too dangerous. Otherwise, you'll stay where you were, but some items and money will be taken and you'll wake up with lower health and stamina. Players do have the option to stay out and use a sleeping bag if they want though, and a sleeping bag acts just like a normal bed but without resetting your spawn point and it can only be used once. So the last feature I'm going to talk about before getting onto the new character is a feature inspired by another indie game called Swords and Magic and Stuff as well as some more tester feedback. This feature is the bellows. These are used to increase the speed of the smelter by 50%. You can craft them using fibres, wood and life essence, which is an item that essentially brings things to life. It's an automated item. And place it next to and facing a smelter. When the smelter begins to work, the bellows will automatically start for you. Just one quick side note. One of my testers is a music producer who has offered to make some music for Sundermead. I've linked his channel in the description, so go and check him out. Oh yeah, and uh, this song you can hear in the background? That's the first song from the Sundermead OST. Anyway. Back to the devlog. Okay, so finally, we have this version's new character. Everybody meet Eowyn. She's a beekeeper and is also Chayada's wife. Towards the end of Chayada's questline, you'll be able to get her bed and summon her to Sundermead. Because she's a beekeeper, she'll provide your settlement with honey, which you can use to brew mead and then trade with the outside world later on. She also gives you the recipe for dandelion and burdock, which is a drink from which the original cola flavour comes from. She also sells raspberry seeds, blackberry seeds, apple tree saplings, sunflower seeds, onion seeds, and cucumber seeds. Using the latter two, you'll be able to make the plowman's lunch, which you can unlock via the leveling system. So here I'll just quickly walk you through Eowyn's first quest. So you can see I only have six fibers, so I'm just gonna quickly cheat and give myself a few more. So she's asked you to place down her skep for her. I've done it like this so players will be able to design the world however they want and have as much agency as they want instead of just having the NPCs place them down as they wish. So now that you've placed down Eowyn's skep, the next day she'll don her hood and get to work collecting all the honey. And that's it, that's version alpha 0.11 of Sundermead. I just want to thank you all very much for watching. If you're interested in keeping up to date with Sundermead, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I've also got a Discord server, the link to which you can find in the description, as well as a Steam page, and I'd be very grateful if you went and wished this at Sundermead on there. Anyway, that's enough rambling for me. I hope you all have a great day and I hope to see you in the next video. Oh yeah, and I also went on holiday to the